Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Life of Senza. Hey sweet baby. Hey sweet baby. You're my baby. Yes, hello. So I'm out here with my little girl. Um, this is my little special carbon fawn girl. Haven't thought of a name for her yet. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What are you doing? Come on baby. So I've got kimchi out here too. She's very jealous. She's very angry. She does not like this new puppy. Quit. Ah, quit scratching. No. You need to quit. Come on. Um, and anyway. Um, been trying to think of a name for her. Look at that structure, man. Fantastic. Well, you couldn't see it, but she's really big on self-stacking. Come on. Quit scratching your ears. Come on. So, um, so anyway, been a while since I've, since I've done a video on here, but... I, uh, I've got, I've had so much work stuff, work related stuff that it's been hard to, um, focus on more personal stuff like this channel is for. And, um, but after last night, you know, I just have to say, I've had this really profound, like, realization. And it all started with, um, Reese and I working together on a litter which I really see as like teamwork. And so, pst, ah, pst, don't eat my tree. Come on. So, Reese and I, we, all, we have this saying, and it's that we win together. And, um, and that's kind of how we operate um, as really and truly, to some degree, some would say competitors. Um, and we, we really work as a partnership, but we are still our own, like, single entities. And, um, but anyway, but I've always believed that there is enough, um, that th there, you know, there's enough, you know, customers for all of us. And, you know, particularly in this breed, you know, where you're not working with a super overpopulated breed or anything. Although, I will say, having said that, structure that um, I'm, I've been doing a lot of research into the whole overpopulation bit and um, and I'm, I'm you know I'm working on something but but I don't you know it, it's highly likely that there's not even an overpopulation crisis there's and I'm gonna say that and now I have to kind of talk about it a little bit because I know that somebody's gonna be in the comment section talking about how there is and I don't get to say my piece but this is the reality and I'm not gonna go into it more than this there are over a million dogs that are imported into the U.S. every year, and a very small amount of them are people like me. The vast majority... Psh, come on. Come, chi, come in this way. Um, the vast majority of them... Let's go. Kimchi. Look at her. She's going to be stubborn because I've got this new puppy. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? See, and that's fine. You know what I mean? That's fine because we're going to go this way. Did your baby come here, girl? Your baby girl. Did your baby come on? I think I'm zoomed in too much. So anyway, um, come on. What's in the other? Kimchi. Psh, get over here, dog. Let's go. Oh, she's gonna be such a stub. She's being such a punk. Anyway, I don't care. So, yeah. Um, for example, if you were to Google Kuwait rescue dogs, USA, whatever, that rescue, quote unquote rescue, um, has brought in over 700 dogs from Kuwait for people to purchase over here under the guise that they're rescuing a dog from Kuwait. Um, there are massive amounts of dogs that are brought in from Romanian puppy mills under the, under the pretense of rescue. And there's just a lot of, um, of, of rescues that are purchasing dogs from puppy mills and that is USDA puppy mills. And so that the, all of those purchases are logged and documented. And there was one rescue who paid over a hundred thousand dollars for a single Brittany Spaniel. So, or no, I think it was a King Charles Spaniel. It was a King Charles Spaniel. So anyway, um, so, like I said, these people have a vested interest. Kick her! Kimchi! 
Just like a girl. Come here, baby. Come here, baby girl. Yes, your baby girl. Yes. Yes. Don't you run over the puppy. Come here, baby girl. Your baby. Oh, she's so... She's playing hard to get right now. She's so mad. She's so mad. Structure. She's so mad. Anyway. <sighs> I'm going to create a draw again. I'm going to go away. She rejects me. I reject her. See, the thing is, is like she's trying to, what she's trying to do right now is like basically set her boundary. She's like, okay, like, you know, it's, it's kind of like a dominant thing, but, but it's, but it's not that simple. You know what I mean? It's very, it's much more nuanced. And she knows that like she's basically mad and she's going to make me work for her attention. She's not going to be so loving. She's not going to be so affectionate. And that's fine. There we go. We got her. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Now I'm going to give her love, right? I'm going to give her love, but I'm not going to go to her. That's the difference. And see, see, see how she doesn't want to come to me. So we're in a bit of a stalemate right now, but that's okay. You see how she's looking at the puppy, looking at the puppy. She's so ticked off right now. She's so jealous. Super jealous. She's like, I am the great kimchi. There's no one but me. She's like, screw that puppy. Look at her. She's just watching her. She don't care about me at all. All she cares about is that puppy. She's like, I will take you out. <laughs> Kim G. Good baby. So I will not go to her. I will not bridge that gap. If she wants to hang out... She'll have to bridge that gap. Because if I was to walk to her, then I would basically be giving her the um, dominant position. You know what I mean? Like I would, it, you ever heard the saying that in every relationship there's someone chasing the other one? Well, I don't chase. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not chasing my dog. If she wants to hang out with me, she can hang out with me. If she wants to sit there and be butthurt, she can sit there and be butthurt. It's totally up to her. Um... Pretty girl. Anyway, um, so enough about the whole thing. The important part of this, um, I feel like this video is all over the place. It's just been such a crazy, uh, it's just been a whirlwind. So basically, um, oh, see, you try to knock that baby over. Rude. Look at her. Look at her. And she's like, I'm going to try to play with her and then I'm going to beat her up. Um, so we got the, we, 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 we produce these puppies, right? When they were first born, they were black and we thought that they were black puppies. And then over time, the color changed and we were really curious about what it was. And it took a long process to really figure out what it was. But in that process, during that time, we, we met so many people and we, we networked with so many people and, and we educated so many people and we, and we, and we literally realized kind of a mystery that has been in our breed for 30 years and all of that because of these little puppies right here and our unwavering, you know, dedication to the truth and, and not just that, but like, so Manny, who was on the live stream Many people were very impressed by him and, um, and me obviously as well. That's why I had him on and he made me, him and his friend gave me a hope. Like oftentimes when I'm in this position and I get targeted by a lot of hate, sometimes it can seem like, like the, like the dog community is just lost and like, it'll never be, um, it feels like a lost cause if you will. And then I see Manny, and I hear about his friend Jamal. I think his name is Jamal. Pardon if it's not. Um, and it gives me hope for a brighter future. For people that are just as invested as Reese and I are in the truth, in preservation, and um, in the science. Ooh, structure. Woohoo! Woo! Dang, she's nice. Okay, my bad, y'all, but who? Who? Ching, yo. Okay, uh, anyway, it's been 
that's what it feels like the whole this whole thing has been just last night I was on cloud nine with Manny and educating and learning and all this stuff and putting together pieces of puzzle that little did I know that Vito and Daviri has been trying to tell people for years I had somebody translate that um, letter even better and it confirmed exactly what Manny said and it was so profound. It's like, it's, it's like in Italy, they already knew what it was. Okay. I don't want to pretend that like we discovered something that nobody knew about. They did know about it, but there's not good enough communication and particularly things get lost in translation that a lot of us just didn't know, you know what I mean? Or if we, if we had, because I had been told that, but there wasn't any evidence. There were no pictures. And even if whenever I finally did see the pictures, there still was no explanation for what it was. Kimchi, get out of there. Let's go. Come on. Kimchi, get out of it. Good girl. That's a good girl. Get my baby. Get my baby. Get my baby girl. Are you tired? Are you going to be tired of being butthurt? Look at her. Look at her looking away. Need you my baby. Are you going to be my butt? That's a sweet girl. That's a sweet girl. Kisses on the nose. You're a good girl. You be nice. Yeah, you be nice. Let me scratch your booty. Let me scratch your booty. Let me scratch your booty. Good girl. So, um, so what I'll say is that it gave me hope for the future. It made me proud of what I do in a way that I honestly had never really felt before. Like, I had a lot of pride in what I do with the dogs, but I... You know, I didn't really know to what impact I was actually having as far as my videos and things like that. And, um, and particularly about the structure, you know, I mean, Reese and I used to talk about that. People don't care. People don't, they don't notice. They don't care. And the reality is actually people do care and people are seeing it and people are learning. And that's, that's pretty awesome. (laughs) And I, you know, I'm just really happy. I'm, I'm very empowered. I'm very enthusiastic and excited about the positive impact that we've had. Um, and, and it's probably even more so than even what I'm realizing. I mean, these are just two people that I've talked to, but, um, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, who, who doesn't get excited seeing the, the, the interest in the intelligence, um, in Manny, you know, the, the, the possibilities, like that's a, that's a, I know that when he becomes a vet, that's a vet that I would love to have. You know what I mean? Not these people who just don't care and the kind of stuff that we're seeing now. Good girl. Good girl. Um, you know, a truly educated vet that you can go to and get information. You don't have to go online and look it up. You don't have to argue with them because they're working with science that is, you know, decades old and has, has already been proven to either be ineffective or um, there are better alternatives. So, um, anyway, I'm just... I feel really good right now. I'm very happy. There's there's a lot of really positive things happening in my life right now. My son and he's doing well and my daughter's doing well and my business is doing well. I mean, granted, you know, we're not doing the breedings that we would like to be able to do because of the whole permit situation, but it's okay. You know what I mean? Reese and I have worked out enough of a thing that I am still able to financially support myself and um, kind of maintain it's not even about supporting myself it's maintaining the income that I need to to be able to qualify for a house if in fact I do end up needing to leave and um, that's just you know an important aspect of it and so she and I are just doing a thing where we split the litter you know what I mean and um, and that's the only way I would do it I know that some breeders will only give 2500 or, or a puppy but there's no way that I would whelp somebody's litter for anything less than half the litter Um, and that's what we're doing. And it was my offer, mind you. She didn't, she didn't even, um, suggest that it was my, it was my offer because that, like I said, it was the only way that I would feel that it would be worth it. And so it's just a way that we can both kind of once again, win together. You know what I mean? You always have to be willing to like, to not feel the need to put yourself first, if that makes sense. Um, and you just have to have trust. And that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about because I talked a lot about having faith in God. And one of the things I've come to realize lately is that for me, faith isn't the right word. 
if you have, if you believe God exists, if you know that there is a God and that, and that God exists, you don't need to have faith because you already believe. What you need is trust. You have to trust that God is going to be there for you the way that you trust that your spouse is going to be there for you or your family is going to be there for you or that you are going to be there for you. Like, um, it's trust. You know what I mean? We don't say I have faith in my husband or I have faith in my dad. It's you trust. And I think that faith creates this weird separation between us and God that I personally have found it's like a it's like a buffer. It's like it's like no matter how hard I try, I can't get close enough. And I found that it's in for me personally, it is in the saying of faith. It is not faith. Faith is the wrong word. It is trust. You've got to have trust in God, um, not faith. And that's just for me personally. I'm not saying that, that, it, that it's um, not that way for other people. But for me personally, um, that's the way I see it, is that it's trust. And I feel a lot closer to God since I've made that distinction. So anyway... Um, I guess that's all I got to say about that. Um, I hope you guys are having a good day. I hope you enjoyed this combination video between, um, between talking about personal stuff and also getting to see a little bit of behavioral stuff. Look at this. Look at her. Look at her. Don't scratch your ears. I know. I need to powder your ears. I need to powder. Powder your ears. I know, sweet baby. Okay. I see you. I see you. Okay. Well, I'm going to get inside. I hope you guys are having a good day and I'll talk at you later. Bye.